first aired in America. It was an export from Japan, which I think was originally called Magical Girl Squad Robo Dance, yes. Not quite as familiar with anime as Americans are today, a lot of people just saw it as Speed Racer with tits. But we didn't understand that the audience for this was growing more and more rapid. And whether for its campiness or actual enjoyment of the story, it was becoming an underground hit. For kids, teens, and that creepy guy who fixes your computer. So, what is the secret formula and why did it catch on with so many? Well, let's start at the very beginning. You'll quickly notice that, like many animes, the best parts of the show aren't in the action, the character, the story, or the writing. It's in the goddamn opening theme song. Not only is the beat catchy as hell, but look at this animation! Look at the visuals! It's like a Van Gogh of anime kid openings. In fact, there's even a Van Gogh in it! Don't ask why, I don't care, it looks friggin' awesome! I'll allow it! I guess the only downside is the obvious American editions, like this pointless Star Wars style scroll. Yeah, because that's what girls watching this show are really into. Star Wars! They go so hand in hand, I'm surprised Lucas didn't release a more feminine version with Serena doing Darth Vader. Did you hear there's a new Sailor V video game out? I saw it on TV! Lord Vader, the battle station plans are not aboard this ship. Oh yeah. And no transmissions were made. How can that be? My mom finds out she'll ground me and cut my allowance. Her escape pod was jettisoned during the fight, but no life forms were aboard. I can't believe this! Oh! We can get ice cream! Yes, sir. See if you can spot where else the Americans made some changes. They're so subtle, I doubt you'll ever notice where they geniusly slipped them in. Yeah, unbelievably natural. If you were going less for action-packed adventure and more for Saved by the Bell credits. But you quickly discover, in many respects, that is what the show is going for. At first it seems like it's going to be a big, albeit, audience-insultingly rushed space battle between cosmic planet... people... folk. A thousand years ago, our moon was home to a great civilization ruled by Queen Serenity. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Until the arrival of the evil Queen Beryl. Although her world was destroyed, Queen Serenity's last hope was the power of the Empyrean Silver Crystal and the Crescent Moon Wand. Only this crystalline wand can combat the power of the Negaforce. Yeah, look, show, even if you pretend you have a story that matters beyond people who see a high-class meal as a flame in Hot Pocket, you still had to follow up all that supposed epicness with this. Yeah, I bet you thought this was going to be a big space opera with action, drama, and exotic locations. But nope, it's just your common English-speaking town that has everything in Japanese for some reason. Serena! I gotta go! Aren't you forgetting something, dear? Oh yeah, your nose! Everyone's forgetting those around here. This is Serena, a titsy clod who has no idea that she is one of the reincarnations of the Sailor Scouts. She's just your everyday gigantic eyed blonde Japanese girl who constantly keeps flunking her exams. What? Chill out, Serena. It's just one lousy test. It's not like it's the end of the world or something. You don't understand. I'm Japanese. To me, failure is everything. You don't get it, Molly. If my mom finds out I flunked that test, I won't get to play the new Sailor V game. Being pretty as sin and dumb as cheese, she of course is very popular in school, obtaining all sorts of friends. Like an over-the-top accent with a human attached to it. <gasps> That's weird! Very weird! And the awkward years of Dr. Insano's puberty. You're going shopping? What's more important than your grades? Science, of course! When not hanging out with these frightening adolescent creations, she spends most of her time solving her problems by intelligently ignoring them and finding more ways to spend her mother's money. I heard about your test. Want me to be your tutor? She doesn't need uh, a tutor. She needs a trip to the mall to get her mind off this. I could use some new pink barrettes for my hair. Education just gives you wrinkles. She also seems to get in fights with an attractive boy named Darian. What was that you were saying about someone totally cool? Oh. But we can be sure it isn't you. Shouldn't you be going home and doing your homework, Meatball Head? Hey, that is clearly an insult to meatballs. <laughs> well, how's this for inspiration? You're a cream, Darian! You don't know a thing about being cool! 
Wow, they really seem like polar opposites and hate each other to the core. They hook up? Nah. And how tediously long do they drag that out? Oh Jesus, just mail me the comedic banter to my office shredder! By the way, here's a confusing scene. We see her walk by a poster of a young girl dressed exactly how she is dressed. Like it's from a movie or a show or something. I wish I could be like Sailor V. She's so beautiful and smart. Something exciting's always happening in her life, not like mine. So, what? A movie or TV industry got wind of this idea that coincidentally is exactly the same as what's going on right now? Does that mean that something like Transformers is a true story then? Because to be fair, my car has been giving me dirty looks. <coughs> Things seem to change, that is, the formula is set in motion, when a magic cat named Luna arrives and tells her that she is the reincarnation of one of the Guardians. You are Sailor Moon and you must fight evil when it confronts you. Just repeat after me. Moon Prism Power. Moon Prism! And of course, this gives way to the famous transformation scene. The tiara, the boots, the nail polish, later covered by gloves, so that was pointless. And of course, the miniskirt. The mini, 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 mini skirt. Yep, the costume choice that in no way enables her to fight better, but sure does force her to squat a lot. Okay, so take out the fact that's obviously in no way battle armor. Take out the fact that it's obviously fan service. Take out the fact that just like He-Man, somehow removing more clothes bizarrely disguises them. Though to be fair with both these outfits, is the face really the first thing you're gonna be looking at? Take all that away and just tell yourself, this obviously sexualized transformation that takes up a solid minute in each episode happens to a 14-year-old girl. Yeah, forgot that for a second, didn't ya? The girls in this show are, and always have been, 14 years old. 14 years old. 14 years old. 14, damn! Uh, years old. Now, before any of you find this incredibly creepy, let me make one thing perfectly clear. The age of consent in many parts of Japan is, in fact, 13 years old. Now you may find it incredibly creepy. And yes, there's a lot of fine print to that law that evens it out a bit, but there's just as much fine print that evens it back into kinky territory again. For example, sex between 13 to 17 year olds can only be done with other 13 to 17 year olds. That's good! However, that's only sex. Groping, hand jobs, blow jobs, and whatever else your preferred imagination can come up with is all perfectly legal. That's bad. However, they have cracked down on human trafficking, forced prostitution, and other illegal acts endangering people in that age range. That's good! But that doesn't stop people from creating kinky establishments like the Sexual Harassment Corporation where you pay to molest girls in school and business sets and is totally, 100% legal. Can I go now? So, um, yeah, I guess when you come down to it, it is just cultural differences. I mean, sexual urges in young people does start well before 18. My personal problem is, like media in most cultures, it doesn't try to help younger people understand sexuality, but rather exploits it. Rather than educate young people about sex, it's honestly just easier if we can make money off of it. But, of course, all this talk about Sailor Moon being a sexy 14-year-old pinup is all building up to one important question. Given this information, why did I still put her in the top 11 hottest anime of women list? I didn't know! I swear I didn't know! I mean, look at the way they're drawn, man! I thought they were in college or at the very least late high school! Wouldn't you have made that guess? Come on, look at the way they're showing them off! So Serena seems shocked that she can now suddenly transform. This dream is getting weirder and weirder, I'll never study that hard again! Though, weirdly enough, doesn't look the least bit shocked while she's transforming. In fact, I bet she'll keep this exact same calm state every single time she changes, and every villain she's fighting will quietly wait for her to finish before actually attacking. It's the Japanese way. Speaking of which, there actually is a villain in this series, known as Queen Beryl. Yes, because no name is more terrifying than a wooden container that can bring me alcohol. Actually, you sure she's not the hero? She uses her evil minion named Jedite. Eh, too obvious. 
to get energy out of the people of Earth, all to serve the evil realm of the Negaverse. Or as Luna likes to put it, the Negaverse. The Negaverse. The Negaverse. The Negaverse. The Negaverse. The Negaverse. How does Jedi plan to do this? By creating various monsters targeting people's lust for jewelry, pop singers, fitness, and pretty much anything exploiting the empty shallowness of all mankind. So naturally, Serena is never far behind, often falling for the majority of his evil plans. Please get in this evil device, which is in no way an evil device. Joke's on you, it was an evil device. But once Luna reminds Serena to use her brain, she goes through her pedalicious transformation and is ready to kick ass. cowers in the corner like a fucking scaredy cat. I don't want to do this anymore! I can't! I'm too scared! Get me out of here! No! Ah! In fact, the fucking scaredy cat is braver than her! You must fight this evil monster or the whole universe could cease to exist! It's time to become Sailor Moon! Let's go! You have to stand and fight! Be brave! <laughs> <laughs> I think it can also be used that way. Yeah! Well, it'll probably surprise no one that Sailor Moon actually does very little physical fighting in this show. Which is no big shock if she even raises her knee a centimeter to kick, she exposes her goodies to the world. Which in many parts of Japan, of course, is no big problem anyway. Most of the fight scenes require her being trapped or stuck in something for probably longer than is needed. But hey, anything to save on that action-packed detailed animation that we're... Just going to repeat anyway! In fact, the one you'll see most often next to the transformation sequence is her using a magic tiara which turns her enemies to dust. Or, in this case, the guy doing the magic act next door comes to save her, then allowing her to throw her goddamn tiara. You must believe in yourself, Sailor Moon! Tuxedo Mask, thank you! Don't mention it. This is Tuxedo Mask. And yes, it is painfully obvious who it really is. But please don't tell Serena, she's not very bright! Others will test you. Do not be afraid. What a hunky guy. He's so dreamy. And not at all like that other guy who I hate so much. Thank God they have nothing in common and are two completely different people. Oh, hi, Clark. Get any new pictures of Superman lately? The magic tiara isn't her only enchanted device, though. She also has a pen that can change her into anything. Wait, what? It's a very powerful transforming tool. It turns you into whatever you want. Well, then what the fuck is she using that tiara for? I mean, they didn't give any limitations or anything. They said she can change into fucking anything she wants. Hey, why doesn't she just turn around and be like, take on the form of Godzilla? <laughs> Series over! Six seasons spared! But nope, she uses it just to don disguises. Which really aren't necessary, seeing how all you have to do is throw on a bathing suit and a napkin over your crotch, and apparently nobody will recognize you. And besides, we know she's gonna leave the real fighting to the other Sailor Scouts. Oh yeah, I should probably talk about them. The other reincarnations of the Scouts are found over time, usually in the exact same city and often even the exact same school. So, maybe Jedi should try his evil plans in another part of town. I mean, it's not like the Power Rangers that can beam anywhere. All this show does is glorify how lazy Serena is. Serena, a monster is attacking Tokyo! How far away is that? About 10 miles. Hey, it's just Tokyo. But you should... These other sailors are Sailor Mars, who uses fire, Sailor Jupiter, who uses thunder, Sailor Venus, who uses energy beams, and Sailor Mercury, who uses... FUCKING BUBBLES! Their personalities are about as on par as, oh, let's say, the Spice Girls. No, no, that's too demeaning. Um, let's say handsome. But to their credit, they are the ones who do most of the work. And they're eventually joined by another cat named Artemis. Stop squabbling. And yes, even the other planets over time join the group as well. Ooh, except Pluto. Um, you're not a planet anymore, so, um, yeah. And to answer your question, yes, every kid snickered like an idiot when they heard there really was a Sailor Uranus. But, um... <laughs> Actually, things got kind of interesting with her character, seeing how Uranus and Neptune were cousins in the show, but not in the Japanese version. No, no, in the Japanese version, they were a couple. <laughs> That's right, straight up lesbians. What was that? Nothing, I said nothing! 
Yeah, kind of funny how we can sex up our 14-year-olds all we want, but the idea of them being attracted to something that don't have a penis apparently was too much for Americans back then. So just to check. Okay, shame. Okay, shame. Come on, guys, maybe you could have worked it into your half-assed PSAs at the end. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, there's PSAs in this show. Obviously slapped on at the end of each episode using the same animation they used before. Because Laura knows, the show hasn't repeated enough animation already. Starving yourself and exercising till you drop is not a smart way to lose weight. Like a car without gas, our bodies can't run without food. Good nutritional food. To say they're time fillers is an understatement. Half the time, they don't even bother to fill in the dead air they care so little about it. Daydreams are nice, especially the ones about... food. <laughs> oh, daydreams are cool, all right. But just don't forget about the here and now. Yeah, if they want a more appropriate ending, they go with something like this. Hey kids, a lot of time we get angry letters from your parents because we know our show makes you dumber. So here's our last minute table scraps to try and teach you something in the last few seconds we have. Um, brush your teeth. <laughs> or in the case of the lesbian duo, maybe they can do something like, Hey kids, you got boys and you got girls. Pick one. <laughs> and guys, that's as far as I got. I know there's more characters and more villains, but I specifically wanted to address the repeated formula that got Sailor Moon popular in the US, and why on earth it actually worked. And that formula, as I can figure out, is as such. Serena acts like a selfish idiot, supportive friends pick up her slack, Barrel rubs Crystal Ball like a boob and sends Jedi out to create monster and or device to obtain energy, using a marketing tool targeted towards vain suburbanites. One of the scouts discovers the plan or fall for it herself. Transformation takes place via reused sexually confusing animation. Scout or scouts are trapped. Pratt in the hat seems to get them out and do nothing else. Serena never figures out who he is. Uses her magic tiara that she should have used earlier instead of reusing more dialogue footage. Destroys villain and goes back to being an idiot again. So yeah, just to double check again, why did this work? Perhaps like a lot of other formulas, it knew what to keep familiar and what to keep changing up. It knew it was going to have a villain, but it changed up what kind of villain. It knew it had to involve an interest or product that girls wanted to be involved with, so it had a different one each episode. There was always peril that the girls had to get out of so that you'd feel great by the end when they finally do. Keeping the formula exactly the same, but changing up just the right elements that needed to be changed. So, do I enjoy the show? Fuck no. Does it have an ingenious formula? Fuck yes. Is it bad for kids? Fuck not really. While the Serena character is an annoying airhead, I will give her credit that she does at the very least have a character. It's not one that I like, but at the same time it would have been easy just to make her a pretty face with no personality. But she clearly does have a personality and goes to big extremes. And they do make her look strange and bizarre just as much as they do make her look pretty half the time. And though yeah, she can be self-centered, she's never really mean per se. And I guess from what I understand, the character does get smarter as the series goes on. Or at the very least, braver. As for sexing up a 14-year-old? I think it's weird, but I guess there's always just gonna be cultural differences. And in all honesty, we've let out much worse. Unlike a lot of pop stars and teen magazines where the artificiality is all that's there, this at least allows girls the fantasy of being the hero and actually doing something. Even if it is mixed in with that artificiality as well. But I don't know if Serena's dummy reaction to it all always shows it in such a good light. But the moments where she fights back and saves the day is always shown in a good light. So have fun with your little show, just keep it as far away as you can from me. Yeah.